In this lecture, we'll explore big O notation, and we'll use search and sort algorithms implemented in Python to better understand time complexity. A sorting algorithm is just an algorithm that puts a data structure, like a list, in, certain, in a certain order, and a search algorithm retrieves information from a data structure. Pretty straightforward. So big O notation is all about how much time an algorithm takes, not in the best case, but in the worst case. And there are many different complexities or orders of growth. We'll look at four of them in this lecture. We'll look at constant, linear, logarithmic, and exponential. So let's go ahead and start with constant notation. Constant will execute in the same time regardless of the size of the input. So the best example is just accessing an, an index in, a, in an array directly. So we have the example letters equals A, B, C, and let's say we want to access the second index, that, that would return C. If we doubled the array, we went to F, and we accessed F, that would take the same amount of time. So um, th th those two times are constant. And then if we added, uh, let's say, we went all the way to Z, and then we looked for the last letter in the alphabet and uh, accessed that index, and it returned it, it took the same amount of time as it did with C and F. That's an example of constant. Another example is if you are familiar with the stack, then if you add something to the stack, it takes a certain amount of time, and if you popped it or removed it from the stack, that would take the same amount of time. Another example of constant. Moving on to linear, linear will grow in direct proportion to the size of the input data set. So let's imagine we have this example here, letters B, C, D, and our array uh, is, it has a length of three. So if we insert into the zeroth index in Python the letter A, it would, um, you know, it would move D, C, and B over three times. There would have to be three movements in order to enter A. Okay, so keep that in mind, three movements for A. If we doubled it, and now we had six indices, and we wanted to insert A, it would have to move six over, and then it would have to move nine over, you know, or, or 12 over, et cetera. So as the, as the data set grows, as the array grows, our time is also growing, so it will grow in direct proportion to the size of the input data set. The best example is the linear search. A linear search is a search algorithm that checks each element in the list until a match is found. So if our target element is three, it goes to the, the array, looks at 10, compares it, no, 20, compares it, three, found it. Now, in the best case, if we were looking for 10, we would find it in the first instance, right? No problem, but that's the best case. That's not what Big O is about. Big O is about the worst case. So let's say we're looking for 10, but it's at the end of the list. So it would take us four tries, let's say four tries through the loop, to, uh, through the array, to find 10. If we doubled it to four, uh, to eight indices, it would take eight tries. It would take, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So as, we, uh, as the data set grows, the time is also growing. An excellent example of, of linear notation, O of N. So let's go ahead and look at linear search in Python. We won't actually do this. For the other ones, we'll do a practical Python program at the end to, to test the time. But um, in this one, uh, with linear search, it's pretty straightforward. Numbers, uh, we declare it. We search for a target. We use the for loop to iterate through the list. And um, we would find that, finally, if the target matches um, the variable pulled from the for loop, then we print that, uh, we print that variable, and we find a number. So how fast is linear search? Well, the, names, uh, the name has it all. It's linear, obviously, and uh, we can test it, which we will uh, very shortly. We'll actually focus on uh, the binary search and the bubble sort, but we'll see an example of this in the um, coming examples of Python. So here's, in, in case, because uh, we're doing it online, so in case the results are not as accurate as, uh, as, as uh, the test that we performed offline, uh, here are the some of the test you know the test run results that we had from when we did it. We, the array size is growing; it's doubling, and you can see the predicted time should double, and the actual time actually doubles. So definitely, when we did the linear uh, search in Python and we timed it, we actually found that it actually was you know O of, o of n, and there were there were a few. Uh, there's, there, there's there's room for a margin of error, obviously, but that's due to um, the module that we're using. So moving on to logarithmic, uh, this this is not as straightforward as the as the other as the other notations that we looked at previously. But basically, it produces a growth curve that peaks at the beginning and then flattens out. So this is actually an excellent uh, notation. This is this is ideal. Um, the best example is a binary search algorithm. So how does binary search work? Well, it, if you're looking for an element, let's say we're looking for 78, it goes to the middle of the array and it looks. And this has to be sorted, obviously. So from 3 to 78, it's sorted. It goes to the middle of the array, and it looks. Is 10, 10 in this case is middle, because uh, it, goes, it will go left. 
Um, so it goes to 10 and compares. Is 78 greater than 10? The answer is yes. Because the array is already sorted, you can get rid of half of the array. And now you're left with 20 and 78. It goes to the middle again. That's the 20. Searches, finds out that 78 is greater. And then finally it finds the, the number, the target. Here's binary search in Python. Go ahead, and have, go ahead and have a look at it. And then in the demo at the end of the uh, lecture, we'll go ahead and actually run this program and break it down and explain what's happening in it. How fast is binary search? Well, it's uh, logarithmic and we can find out, if we test the data, we'll find out that it is going to peak as the data set increases. Moving on to exponential. In exponential, you have the performance proportional to the square of the size of the data set. So as the data set increases, the um, time you know, goes through the roof. And so this is actually uh, one of the worst complexities that you can have, and a great example is the bubble sort algorithm. So bubble sort makes multiple passes through a list, compares the adjacent indices, that are next, the two that are next to each other, and swaps those that are out of order. So in this list, 21, 5, 4, it's going to start at 21, look at 21 and 5, and swap those because 21 is greater than 5. And then it's going to look at 21 and 4, and then swap those because 21 is greater than 4. And it keeps doing that until the whole... Um, array is sorted. Here's an example of bubble sort in Python. Again, have a look at it. We have a simple declaration of, uh, we have an array numbers, we have a function bubbles, we pass in a parameter numbers uh, that can come from an input or from as an argument in the function itself. And then uh, we'll, we'll actually run through this practically at the, end of the, at the end of the lecture and actually see the result and time and everything. Okay, so let's go ahead and start with our linear and binary performance tests. What I've done here is just import a timer and uh, create an empty array, and then we're just going to fill that array with numbers, uh, with, with some numbers from one all the way to a thousand, okay? And what we, we, what we want to do is we want to increase this to test it. And we're just going to append that to the array, so now when we run our program, this array will be filled with, um, with, a, with numbers from one to a thousand. Uh, go ahead and uh, set up a while true, create a target, ask for the target, ask for the choice, you know, do you want one for linear, two for binary, and then based on that choice, we can run any of these two functions. So let's just go ahead and run it, and let's see the target. So now we know from one to a thousand is our um, range. So let's ask for a thousand, and let's ask for it with linear. So it found it in so many seconds, okay? And so what we, what we need to do is we need to record that, uh, make a recording of that, and uh, in, in, in this case, this will be 0 0.00040s and then 763. So record that and make a note of it. And then double the array. So take this and double it. So let's say 2,000. And then rerun uh, your program. Ask for 2,000. Do it linear. And then uh, get it, you know, record that. And then take it, take it, you know, do it again. Double it. Keep doing that. And what you'll find is you'll find that... Um, it's actually, it is actually O of N. It is, as the array is doubling, the time is also doubling. So that's pretty cool. And the findings that you saw in the presentation um, show that. And you can also test it here yourself. So really quickly, the way this, this, way this uh, is working is um, this is just setting up a timer in the linear function, setting up a timer. We run through the array. And like we said earlier, like we showed earlier, this is a pretty simple one. If X, if the... Uh, you know, run through it one, two, three, four, it, you know, iterate through the numbers, and if the number is equal to target, then print that with, um, with just, you know, the duration, how long it took to actually get it. Uh, binary is a little bit more, uh, not as, it's a little bit longer than, than linear, but still straightforward. Start your timer, create a flag, all right, the flag will be false, and the bottom will be zero, the bottom of the, the you know, the minimum, the maximum, the bottom will be zero, the, the top, the max will be the length of the array. And while the bottom is less than or equal to top, so while zero is less than or equal to four or 20 or 4,000 in this case, which it will be, and it, we have not found the, uh, the target, uh, do execute this code. So the middle is just the bottom plus the top divided by two, but not just any division. This is a division without the remainder. So this will give you, you know, 4,000, um, you know, plus the top, uh, so this would be zero plus 4,000, which is 4,000, for example, and then divided by two, will give you 2,000, that's the middle of the array.
right? And uh, if, the, if the numbers, if numbers middle, so middles is 2,000, so go to the 2,000th index in numbers. If it, equals to, if it equals target, remember we're going to the middle. If it equals target, then we need to say found true, change the flag to true, and then we can print out that we found it. That's a great, that's a great situation. But if not, then the numbers, uh, the numbers array, so numbers 2,000, that's the 2,000th index of numbers, um, uh, if it's less than the target, so the target, let's say, was uh, 3,000. If it's less than, then we need to take bottom, we need to like shift our list and make bottom that, that middle plus one. Otherwise, we do the opposite. And that's pretty straightforward. So that's the binary search. And go ahead and test it out and uh, record your findings. So moving on to the bubble sort, let's go ahead and run it. And we have numbers. Uh, we have an unsorted list of numbers. And now we see that they're sorted, and they're sorted in a certain amount of time. Uh, what we've done here is we've passed in numbers. We've created a list. And we start our timer. And we create the top of the list like we did in the last program. But in this case, we don't want the, uh, the complete size of the array because, as you'll see, um, we, we need to search, we need to look at two, at two at a time. And when we do that, if we're here and we ask for, you know, to go to the next index, we're going to get it, a, an out of range error, a problem. So you'll see why the negative one is going to be important here. Uh, sorted is obviously not, it's not sorted yet. And while it's not sorted, let's do some, let's, let's do some things. Let's skip this for a second because this uh, is our way out of the loop. But for now, let's run through the array. And if the number, the current index of numbers, uh, if it's bigger than the next index in numbers, so if 21 is bigger than 5, we need to do a, a, a temporary swap. And the swap is just simply, uh, simply creating a temporary variable to hold um, what was currently. So this would swap would become 21. And then uh, numbers, the, the, the current uh, the current value will become five, so we, and then we re put we put swap back into back into here. So now this becomes five, and this becomes twenty one, and then we say that it's not sorted yet, and we keep going through. Finally, uh, what's going to happen is we're going to assume that the list is sorted. Okay, we're going to finally assume that it is sorted, and it's going to try to do the next step. But as when it finds through in the in the entire array that the there is no there's no longer a condition where the um, the you know the, the the former number is greater than the latter you know the, the number that comes later, then it will not execute this and it will not become false. So it will end up moving out of the loop, and then we can finally end our program and we end up with something like this.